Hello, Trevor. Delighted to be chatting to you. Myself and Steve Evans here. Hi, Hi Trevor. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. How, Shall, uh, go on. Sorry, Steve. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, how's life in Vancouver for a an adopted Geordie, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. Um, been out here about three weeks now. Um, just settling in, really. We're out here for three months in total, so got plenty of time to get used to the place. But I've been here a lot of times before, so I know the city pretty well. Well, I believe you're, from what I saw earlier on, aren't you heading back in August to go to the Crime Fiction Weekend? I, I am, yeah, yeah. Um, that looks a good event, that. Yeah, it looks amazing. I was just chuffed to be invited, you know. It's pretty prestigious. Um, I, don't know, I don't know how they found my name and decided <laughs> I was a, a fit for an Oxford college, um, but we'll see how it goes. You've got to give a... It's not like a panel. You have to give a presentation about something. Um, so I'm doing stuff about northern crime writing, really, which, again, how that fits in with an Oxford college, I've no idea, but we'll see how it goes. Well, they've got a, a bit of a variety of authors there, haven't they? I mean, I've met Ellie Griffiths is on it. I've met Ellie at a previous book fest. Yeah, uh, I don't know any um, of the others, but there's a right variety in there, isn't there? Ellie's a good mate of mine. She, We've got the same editor. We're with the same publisher. Oh, are you? Um, oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she's she's helped me a lot. She's been very supportive. Because um, she's she's like the big hitter with my publishers, if you like. Um, uh, right. So yeah, she's looked after me. She's nursed me through the publishing industry a little bit. Yeah, uh, met her at the uh, there was a, a book fest in Rochester a couple of years ago, just before lockdown, and oh, uh, right. bought a couple of books. Then you know, yeah, yeah, lovely. Yeah, she's great. She's really, um, yeah. you know, just one of the nicest writers you could meet. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Good so stuff. yeah, I'm coming back. I'm coming back about five days early to do that because we were originally scheduled to come back a little bit later. But my wife's going to stay here for the full three months. And then you're going back out to Vancouver again after? Uh, no, no. Um, but we might go out again at Christmas because our daughter right. um, lives in Vancouver, so that's why we're over here, really. Yeah. But before we talk about your award-winning trilogy, the Streets trilogy, tell us what you do outside of writing. What hobbies you've got? Um. Massive music fan, yeah. love going to see bands. Um, if I was in England, I'd be going to Glastonbury next weekend for sure. Would you have gone to Anfield last week? Uh, what was on there? Elton John and the week before the Rolling Stones. You were there, weren't you, Steve? Yes, I was Elton John on Friday, yeah, and then the Eagles right. the next week. I t- I t- I'm, I'm a bit of a new school kind of guy. I like to see new bands and young up-and-coming bands um, as much as the old established ones, really. Um, in fact, I've got, you can't quite see it here. This is a Scouse band. She oh, yeah. drew the gun. Don't know if you've heard of them. No. They're brilliant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really very political um, yeah. indie guitar band. Uh, Louisa Roach is the lead singer, songwriter, um, proper Scouse lass. <laughs> uh, quite a late starter, not as late as me in the crime writing world, but I think, I think she's, you know, pushing 40 when she started. Uh, and yeah. she's great. She's great. I love them. I went to see them recently. And the, the book that you've got behind you, Terry, Dead End yep. Street, there's yep. an epigraph uh, oh. at the front. They wrote a song called Poem About the Homeless. Um, and Louisa allowed me to quote from the song in the front of the book. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I just messaged, I don't, I've never met her. I just messaged her on Twitter and said, any chance I could quote from your song? Yeah. And normally, normally you have to pay money for this. Yeah, and, you know, copyright, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And she just said, yeah, fill your boots, mate. Get on with it. Just really? It. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm chuffed. Yeah, speaking of local bands from Newcastle area, you probably know Newcastle pretty well, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, you you don't know the Caffreys, do you? Phil Caffrey and the boys? I, I'm aware of them. Yeah, I'm aware yeah. of them, but I don't know them, um, which is unusual in Newcastle because you normally know pretty much everybody. Um, yeah, I know. I know Phil quite well. Yeah, I've met him on many occasions. Know, he was a good friend of my sister's. Yeah, I do know some Caffreys, and I've always thought they're probably related. There's a there's an actor I know called Joe Caffrey, um, and I, I've kind of always suspected he was probably related to the people in the band, but I don't know that for sure. Yeah, it's a very not, small world. Yeah. It's a very small world, Newcastle. It, it, it's like one degree of separation between everybody, really. Oh. Yeah, and I noticed you volunteer, or you, I, I don't know if you still do, at the uh, People's Kitchen as well. That's another place I'm familiar with. Yeah, yeah so I do. Uh, well. Every, well, obviously not while I'm in Vancouver, so I've got a bit of a break, but every Tuesday afternoon, I, I rustle up food for 200 people. 
um, in about four hours. It's 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 great fun. It's uh, gets me off my ass as well because you know <laughs> for, when you work as a writer the full the, the, all the time, you're just sitting down really. So going there and working in a hot kitchen for about four hours and staying on my feet is is good for the soul. I think. Oh. Excellent. Yeah. Good stuff. Trevor, I'm jumping ahead of you, but that, that experience, is that is that what you use to sort of make Jimmy Mullen character, the, the guy on the street, make that more authentic because you've got the yeah. real life experience of that? Yeah, certainly. Certainly. I was I was very aware when I started to write books with a homeless character that that some of his background, you know, is kind of based on things that I do know a lot about. So he's an ex-serviceman. I was in the Navy for 16 years. So I, yeah. I knew I could write about an ex-serviceman. Um, but uh, obviously I've never, well, not obviously, but I've never been homeless. I've never yeah. lived on the streets. Um, and I, I was about halfway through the book when I thought I really need to make sure that I'm getting this right. You know, So I went down to the people's kitchen. Initially, just to have a chat and to kind of have a look around and meet some people. Um, but I saw what they were doing there and just thought, oh, you know, I can't just I can't just talk the talk. I need to walk the walk as well. So I, I put my name down on the list yeah. um, and a few months later managed to to get work there on the Tuesday afternoons. Okay. Um, so I've been there about four years now. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's really useful. Um, and it also means I'm giving something back as well as mm. just writing about it. Yeah. Now. Mm. Yeah. So you're in the, in the Navy 16 years. When what sort of time span or time dates was that? Uh, when did you get I joined, out? Or? I joined in about 1977, um, so until the early 90s, um, 93, I think I left. Um, yeah, similar time span. I was in the army, same, same, very similar times, to be honest. Oh, but do you do you think the discipline of the services helped you uh, when you when you have to sit down and start writing a book, for example, and you know you need some discipline, don't you? You need to sit yeah, down. Yeah, I guess. Do you think that all helps? I guess a little bit. I think you know. You just get the job done when you're in the services, don't you? You just exactly get yeah. a job and you get the job done. <laughs> so I don't mess about. I try and I try and make it a nine to five job. I try and sit down on a Monday morning at nine o'clock, work till five, do that five days a week, take the weekends off, um, and pretty much stick to that as best I can. Uh, and that in that way, I mean, in the crime writing world, they expect you to produce a book a year. That's pretty much the, yeah, the expectation. Yeah. Um, and if I, with that schedule, then I can do that quite comfortably. And I always hit my deadlines. You know, some writers are always asking for extensions. Like, oh, I can't get it finished. But I, I'm always delivering early. It's always in pretty good shape. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think that helps. That's pretty much your forces trait, that, making sure it's on time or early, isn't it? I, yeah, well, I no. found it is anyway. <laughs> yeah, you just get the job done. You get it done on time. Um, and, and yeah, so that, that has definitely helped, I think. You did a master's in uh, creative writing. Did the forces that leave, was this after the Navy? Did they, I don't know, help oh, form yeah, that? Yeah, long, long time after. Um, yeah. So yeah, when I, when I left the Navy, I um, went and did a journalism course oh, yeah. uh, in uh, Darlington. I'd, I'd met, my wife is a Geordie, hence me ending up in Newcastle. Um, but I met her uh, about a month before she was moving back to Newcastle from London and I was living in Portsmouth um, and obviously Portsmouth to Newcastle is a bit of a, a trek um, uh, but clearly it went well we're still married 30 years later but she took one look at Portsmouth and said well I'm not moving there Paul, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd never been to Newcastle in my life and I took one look at Newcastle and said well, yeah fair play I'll, I'll come here because uh, it's a wonderful city um, it, yeah, it's brilliant. But, but there was no way I could stay in the Navy and, and do that. There's nothing up there um, yeah. that works for the Navy. I mean, perhaps Scotland, but there were no real jobs for me there. So, mm. so I left and I'd wanted to be a journalist when I was a kid, but I realised, I, A, I didn't have the qualifications at the time and B, I didn't know anything about anything. Um, so I wouldn't have been a particularly good journalist, but kind of 25 years later, I thought I can probably do that now. So I did a journalism course and worked as a journalist for about, six seven years in Newcastle yeah. um, which was good fun but it wasn't quite the job I, I expected it to be very desk bound very rarely got out of the office um, so I gave that up and went into PR for a bit I, I worked uh, as the press officer for the leader of Newcastle City Council for a while um, so the crime writing and the MA came came quite a bit later than that okay yeah <laughs> Did you do that um, uh, journalism course as part of your resettlement course when you got yeah, that? Yeah, a little, yeah, 
Yeah, kind of. Yeah. 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 I, I, when I was leaving the Navy, you know, they're pretty good at, at helping get people resettled. So they gave me some time to go up. I went and, I went and spent a few weeks as like a, the work experience kid on the newspapers up in Newcastle. A, a pretty old work work experience kid, I have to say. Um, yeah. But that, 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 that was very useful and helped me get the place on the course. Um, so yeah, they did they did help a bit. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Church Shelley, can I ask you about how you connected with your publisher? Did you have the, the first one, The Man on the Street? Was this written before? Did you send the yeah. first novel on spec to the publisher? Um, I mean, partially connected to doing the MA. So, so I, after the journalism uh, and the PR work, I, I started writing for the theatre with a, a guy I'd actually met on that journalism course. Uh, and, and we did that for quite a long time, about 12 years, did pretty well with it. But eventually when that was kind of, things were starting to dry up a little bit and I decided to try and write a crime novel because that's what I'd always read since I was a kid, really. I've been reading crime novels and I thought, if I'm going to write a book, it's got to be a crime book. Yeah. Um, and I'd written one just on spec and got an agent, but he was a really terrible agent. Um, yeah. Obviously, you don't know anything about this publishing business until you get into it. True. Uh, and it took me a while to get a terrible agent. But he was terrible. <laughs> um, and also, I don't think the book was great. I mean, I think it's OK. And I think I could go back to it and probably do a bit more work on it and it would be not bad. But he didn't get me any kind of publishing deal. And at the, at, at the same time, the UEA, University of East Anglia, suddenly announced that they were going to do a specialist crime writing course. Oh. They've always done creative writing. Their, their, their literary courses are world famous, really. They've had people like um, Ian McEwan and Ishiguru have done their MA in creative writing. Oh. So I thought, well, if I'm ever going to do a course, this is the time to do it. So I was on the very first UEA crime writing MA um, and I developed the man on the street on that MA, and it was a it was a two year course where we got a lot of introductions to people in the industry. We met a lot of people, uh, and the other writers on the course were brilliant. And um, the man on the street was the book I developed on the course. The whole point of the MA was to write a book. It wasn't to do you know ten thousand word essays and studies on the history of crime fiction. It was produce a ninety thousand word crime novel. Um, which is why I did it, because it was a practical course as much as anything. Uh, so the book was developed on the course, and towards the end of that course, they published an anthology. So they took the first 10,000 words of, of every writer's uh, book and put them out in a little anthology, sent it out to agents and publishers all over the place, uh, and had a little launch um, event in London. Uh, and so we were able to approach agents and just invite them to come to this thing rather than badgering them and say read my book it's great you should sign me up we could say would you like to come along to this event and you can see me reading from the book um and that that was where i first managed to contact ollie munson who became my agent eventually um he couldn't come to the event but he said um but it sounds interesting send me the book now normally you could email these agents and you don't hear anything for months yeah after. yeah um <laughs> Uh, because it was an invite to an event, he, he read that and he just said, oh, send me the book. And I think the next day he emailed me and said, well, this doesn't happen very often, but I started reading it on the train on the way home. Um, I'm, I've enjoyed what I've read so far. Uh, I'll be in touch. And then the next day he emailed me and said, let's have a conversation. Um, so I got my agent very quickly once I'd approached him. And he's a, he's a terrific agent. So I'm delighted with that. Do you know my yeah, friends? Uh, sorry, yeah. Oh, sure, sorry, sorry. I, I can see why he picked it up immediately. I started reading it today, and it's a page turner. There's no messing around. You're straight into the action. None of yeah. this, what Salinger calls the David Copperfield crap. You know, it's <laughs> gazing, sun gazing. It's, it's bang. It's, the, it's, it's there. You're yeah. into the character with his dog, Jimmy, yeah. in the park. You, you're with him. You, you know, you're rooting for him. Thank you. That, well, yeah, that was... I like page turning books, Um I, I, I write very short chapters. I, I, I write for me, really. So I read quite a lot when I go to bed. And if chapters are too long and you're getting a bit tired, you flick up and you go, oh, there's another five pages. Yeah. I, I'll just put it down now. But if, <laughs> yeah. it's, if it's only a page or two, you keep reading. And then if, if you've got something at the end of that chapter that keeps you going, keeps you going, 
my aim is to keep people up all night reading the books. <laughs> he, he seems a very popular agent, Oli Munson. I was having a look at his Twitter before, and he's representing quite a few people. So he must be good. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's great. And he, he's, he's mostly a crime specialist, so he's got very yeah. good contacts. Um, but even then, I, I, I mean, I got Ollie very quickly, but then it took us ages to get a publisher. Um, we, were, we were out on submission for about eight to nine months. Um, wow which was yeah. agonizing, you know, um, mm. some near misses, some very close things with a couple of editors, but um, they didn't know what to do with it because the main character was a homeless guy. They were kind of like, where's the cop? What's going on? You know, this is not, this is not the usual crime book. So they were a bit nervous about it, I think. Um, so it did take us a very long time. It, it looked like we might not get a publisher at one point. Um, yes, but it yeah. I, I, I thought that they, they grasped something like that because it's a bit different because yeah, yeah. you're using a homeless guy. You know, that That's would, what they that always would, say pick up on that. You see quote after quote of saying, oh, yeah, we're looking for something a bit different. <laughs> but when you give it to them and they go, oh, yeah, not that different, mate. That's a bit too different. Um, it's very, you know, it's a difficult business um, and it did take a long time. I got very close with one of the, with another leading editor who we met up uh, in London and he was really keen on the book but but editors can't sign books on their own they're, they're part of a kind of team if you like so they take books to what they call acquisition meetings and they, yeah. they and, but then you get the sales people and the marketing people mm -hmm. um, all chipping in and I and he couldn't get it through the rest of the team he really liked the book but everybody else was like we're not sure how to sell it we're not sure where we're going to pitch it in the market um and he asked me if I would do some rewrites. He said he thought he could convince his team if I changed certain bits of the book. So I went away and it was a substantial bit of work. It took me about three months and I did all that, went back to him and he still couldn't get it through the team. So we had to start from scratch again. So it did take a long time. But I couldn't be with better publishers, Quirkus that I ended up with eventually. Um, and to be fair to the guy who, who did nearly sign it, the, the version that I rewrote for him is the one that got me the deal in the end. So we went back out to people with the new version of the book, if you like, and that's the one that got me signed. And Jane Wood, my editor at Quirkus, is fantastic. She's, um, I think, I think she wouldn't mind me calling her a veteran of publishing. <laughs> nice one. But she's worked with people like Michael Connolly and James Lee Burke. She's she's wow. been around for a while. Wow. Yeah. yeah, which was a bit of a. I thought she was winding me up when she told me that. I was like, well, why am I here? What's uh. what have I got to do with those guys? <laughs> Um, but she's been fantastic. And, and like I said earlier, she edits Ellie Griffiths as well. Um, so her crime books are doing quite well. James on a roll now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Just looking at some of the awards that you've won, these are the, like the highest accolades for a crime writer. Can you tell us about the what? Which one do you sort of are you most proud of? Is it the <laughs> Crime Writer the Dagger Award? Jeez. All of them? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all of them. I mean, I, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you can see, I, I came to this quite late. You know, I was 61 when The Man on the Street was published. You're not really expecting to be picking up debut prizes <laughs> at that kind of age, you know? Yeah. Um, and even just to get mentioned in dispatches and those things is amazing because there's a lot of debut crime books out there. Um, and The Dagger was the first one. So obviously, and that is a big, it's the kind of one that all the debut yeah. crime writers are like, that's the one I'd really like to win. Yeah. So that was fantastic. I, just getting long-listed was great and then short-listed. I mean, it was weird because my The Man on the Street was literally published pretty much the day they closed all the bookshops and we all went into lockdown. Ah. Was, my, my book launch was cancelled on the day of the launch. So that's how close it was to, to lockdown. Um, so we were kind of living in a vacuum a bit, really. It was like, you know, you don't get to go to any events. You don't get to see anybody. The... Uh, the ceremony was done online and and nobody's cameras were switched on at all unless they won so you just had this guy doing like the oscars bit where announcing the shortlist and then going and the winner is and then they called out your name and switched your camera on immediately so you were just suddenly <laughs> like on screen going what <laughs> me <laughs> um, so it was a bit weird uh, it was a bit weird, but obviously it was an absolute delight. And yeah, it was fantastic. But I think probably the one I'm most 
proud of is is the one I didn't win actually I was so I won the two debut prizes the the, the dagger and the crime fest one which I did quite like the crime fest one because Richard Osman was on the shortlist and I was assuming oh yeah, he read it, yeah. You know, he's sold gazillions of books yeah, yeah. so I was pleased with that one but then I was um shortlisted for the Thigston's crime novel of the year not just the debut oh. crime novel but the crime novel of the year so so I was on the long list for that with people like Val McDermott and Ian Rankin and Mark Billingham. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's impressive, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was enough for me, but then they announced the shortlist of six and none of those were on the shortlist and I was on the shortlist as well. <laughs> wow. You're like, what the hell's going on? And also Ellie Griffiths was on the shortlist as well, so my mate was on it. Yeah. So my editor had two books on the shortlist for the Crime Book of the Year, which was fantastic. Um, and I didn't win that one. Quite rightly, Chris Whitaker's We Begin at the End won it, which was my favourite book of the year anyway, so not a problem at all. But it meant I got to go to, the, I got to, go to an actual festival where they were doing the, the presentation. I got to go on stage and talk to um, Mark Lawson from, from the BBC, who does the culture shows and stuff. Huh. He interviewed all the shortlisted people <clears throat> in front of the huge crowds. That was great fun. Um, so probably that one because it, it, it's the biggest prize in crime fiction every year and I was in the last six and that'll do for me brilliant brilliant so your your first three books are the, trilo the trilogy um, you've written you're writing or have written another one is due out next March I think um, is that a standalone one then or is it part of a new series yeah. or is it anything to do with the, the original three no it's a complete standalone I, I, yeah it, it was a bit of a weird journey, really, because when I wrote The Man on the Street, I was I was writing a book about a homeless man who sees a murder and nobody believes him. It was, mm. for me, that was a standalone book. It was a, it was clearly a one-off. He's not a cop. He's not going to be investigating crimes for the next 20 years. Um, but everybody who was interested in the book, every editor, said they wanted more, that it was a series, because they liked the characters and they wanted to see the characters come back. Um, and I was a bit reluctant, but, but ultimately, if a publisher is offering you initially a two book deal, you, you kind of don't say no, do you? You just go, right, I'll find a way to make this work. And I, eventually I realised I could, I could turn it into a trilogy. There are, as well as Jimmy, there are two other homeless characters in the book, his friends, Dino and Gadge. And in The Man on the Street, we get, as well as the current crime story, you get the backstory of how Jimmy has ended up on the streets. What, what was his journey to get there? And I thought, okay, I, if I do two more books, I can tell the stories of the other two guys as the story. I can tell the story of how Dino ends up living on the streets. So I could see that it would give me scope to, to paint that world a bit richer, if you like. Uh, so I agreed to a three, three book series in the end. I mean, the other thing was it's set in the real world, really. And I, I couldn't envisage my homeless protagonist tripping over bodies like he lived in Midsummer for the next 10 years <laughs> of solving crimes like some kind of, yeah. I mean, it just didn't stand up against the reality of the situation. So, so I, I dug my heels in on just three books, um, but they gave me two, two book deals. So they gave me a two book deal to start with. And because the man on the street did so well, they almost immediately gave me a second two book deal. But the agreement was the fourth book of that um, would be a standalone book. So yeah, I've been working on that for about the last eight to nine months. My editor's still editing at the moment. I'm waiting for her to get back to me, although the, I've got the thumbs up, it's good to go. There's a, only a little bit to do with it, I think. Um, any day now I should get that back so I can tidy it up uh, and then it's ready. Uh, so it's gonna be called You Can Run. Uh, it's a fast paced thriller set in a remote Northumberland village. Uh, I have got a pitch as well, if I can remember it. <laughs> I, I did it the other day in a 40 second competition to pitch a book um, so I should be able to remember it <laughs> yeah. a group of armed mercenaries lay siege to a remote Northumberland village their target Alex Winter and his 15 year old daughter Ruby when Alex is captured Ruby manages to escape but soon realises that the only people who can help her are the villagers that she shunned her entire life wow yeah that's that's not a, it's not a bad pitch, is it? Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. I've, I've, really, I've really enjoyed writing it. It's very different um, to the other books. 
uh, not least not least having a 15 year old girl protagonist um, yeah. is a bit of a challenge hmm. yeah so that's likely to be out before next March then isn't it by the sounds of it uh, well it's I think it's I think they're sticking to March my release dates have been a bit weird um, the man on the street was originally due out in March 2020 like I said in hardback yeah but they, they decided to give it what they call a soft launch, which, which means they put it out slightly earlier in just in ebook and audiobook form. So it actually went out in the October before that. Um, and that, that, the idea is it gets a bit of a word of mouth and it builds up a head of steam. And then when the hardback's out, you know, people already know about it. Um, and obviously that worked pretty well. And they did, they did almost exactly the same with the second book, One Way Street. Um, but then for the third one, Dead End Street, they didn't do that at all. They just waited and put the hardback out. And that was out last January. Is that because your reputation had built up and you'd had the reviews in and things? Who knows, Terry? It's <laughs> yeah. thing, man. They just make it up as they go along. I, have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to get involved in that, the business side of it, if you like. My, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, my job is to write the books and their yeah. job is to sell them. Yeah. You know, and I and I don't like you know I love doing things like this. I love talking about the books. I'm very happy to to you know flog my wares on social media and shout about them and stuff like that. Yeah. But I don't want to get involved in the day to day decision making. That's up to them. Um, so I just I I tend to just roll with the punches if you like and and go yeah fine okay. Um, and the last I heard is that you can run will will be out in March, um, but we'll see. Okay, just have we mentioned before that um, your style, it's sort of it's action based, it's action dialogue, short chapters. It's very cinematic in style. Has there been any approaches from by purchasing yeah, the film yeah, lights, television absolutely. lights? Um, yeah. yeah, the the series has been optioned by World Productions, who are the really? people who make um, make Line of Duty and um, wow. Body Guard. Wow. Yeah, uh, I'm, I mean it's you know. Stuff. Quite a lot of books get optioned and never see the light of day on screen. So it's it's lovely to have it. Obviously delighted that it's World Productions, who are brilliant. Um, Jed Mercury, Mercury, the screenwriter? Uh, well, that, yeah, they, he's not part of World Productions technically, but yeah, okay. they, they produced his stuff, certainly. Um, but that, of course, it, it came out during lockdown, so they optioned oh, it yeah. just before lockdown. And, and as you probably know, they hardly made any TV for about two and a half years because of all yeah. restrictions. Yeah, so, true. so that it, it, they have renewed the option. So the option tends to last about three years, but they've renewed it again. So they're clearly still interested. Yeah. So we'll see. It will be fantastic. Um, but you know, I, I don't kind of wander around thinking, "Oh, it's going to be great." I'll tell you when it's out because it might never happen. <laughs> Do you, know, do you know another writer we spoke to? He was a, uh, a Dagger Award winner as well. He, he told me that um, a television company bought the, the television, television rights just so that it would not be bought up by another company because they were making a similar television yeah, series. Yeah, I've, I've heard stories like that. Yeah, certainly. Who was that as a matter of interest? Mike Craven. Oh, I know Mike really well, yeah. You do? Yeah. Yeah, he's a Geordie, oh, living, right. Geordie living in Carlisle. Yeah, he is, yeah. So, yeah, that's, I, I, you know, it's a northeast, a pretty small world, really. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I know Mike, Mike gave me a brilliant quote for the for the first book. Brilliant. Um, I, yeah, I've met him a lot. His books are fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Washington Poe and Millie. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, they're yeah. great. Mm. Yeah, he's doing really well now. It's um, And he's a bit like me. He's, he came to it quite late as well, really. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so speaking about coming to it late do you have any regrets about that not starting writing earlier i mean you were in the forces so it's probably difficult then anyway but <laughs> i mean bizarrely when i was in the navy I, I was a writer that was the branch i was in um so, <laughs> yeah i know i mean a very different very different sort of writer but it seems yeah. like some kind of weird destiny um no i don't i don't think i do actually i a bit like i said with the journalism i you need to you need to have lived a bit of a life, I think, to write these books. Um, yeah, uh, and I I don't think I would have been capable of doing it. I mean, you know, it would have been fantastic, and maybe ten I could have started ten years earlier, possibly. Um, yeah, once you got out the the navy, you probably could have started at yeah, forty odd, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When I when I turned to journalism, I probably could have looked at doing something then, but but no, I think I, it just happened at the right time for me, probably. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I was, yeah, I think I was ready. Probably more, more 
open as well to other people's help, which you really need to be in this industry. You know, you've got to work with other people to make your book the best it can possibly be. And I think because I'd been writing the plays as well with another writer, I'd got used to kind of collaborating with people, if you like. Um, so it, it, I think all the balls fell into place at the right time, probably. Uh, yeah, from me, the, the one I always ask, it's, yeah. I, I always ask this one, regardless. Yeah. Any advice for any new writers out there? What would you What would you give as advice? You know, I've heard all sorts of different ones. I just want a different <laughs> opinion again. <laughs> you always get different answers, don't we, Steve? Yeah, yeah, you do. yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you ask me 10 times, I'd give you a different answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, um, I think, I mean, it's it's slightly twofold, really. You don't want to be approaching agents and publishers until your book is the best it can possibly be. There's, there's no point sending out a badly written, you know, ill-considered book because they won't ever look at you again. You know, you probably only get one shot at this. So your book has got to be brilliant. And for me, the best way to make it the best book it can be is to find other people to, to read it and to give you feedback and to, to offer you different views on, on what it is. Preferably like-minded people and constructive people, not people who just say, this is shit, don't no. do anything <laughs> with it. You need, you need people who are constructive. So, so I, I, I'm quite lucky. When I, when I first decided to turn to the crime writing, despite the fact that I'd already co-written quite a lot of successful plays and kind of knew what I was doing mostly. It's a very different kind of format, if you like. So I did a few writing courses in Newcastle, which were really useful, but mostly the useful thing was that there was a guy on one of them who had a little writer's group of about five or six people. Um, and he invited me to join that. So, so ever since, about every three weeks, we meet up on a Monday night, we swap a couple of thousand words of whatever it is we're working on and everybody gives you some feedback on it. And, and my writing has improved a thousand percent just through that process. And then when I did the MA, it was a similar kind of structure. There was a lot of peer-to-peer -peer feedback. So we had 11 aspiring crime writers, all very committed to what they were doing, but all with very different ideas about how you do it and you know what type of books they wanted to write. But all of our work, certainly all of the work on The Man on the Street was run by those 10 other writers who would all give you feedback on each 10,000 words as you came to it. And, and getting that kind of advice, even if you want to ignore it, that's absolutely fine. If, you, you know, if you've got real faith in what you're doing and you believe in what you're doing, it, it doesn't matter how many people tell you it's rubbish, if you, you've got to stick with it. But if, I think if, if eight people do tell you this is not good enough and needs work, you should be listening to that kind of advice. And I still, to this day, I still do my writers group every three weeks when I'm in Newcastle. And three of us from the crime course, the UEA MA, still swap our work, even though we're now onto our, you know, third, fourth, fifth books, whatever they are. We still, I, I wouldn't send anything to my editor that I hadn't run by all these other people first, because it makes it as good as it can possibly be. It's like you're, you're, you're road testing it, if you like. Um, and you yeah, just it's good advice. It's, yeah. It's advice, it's yeah. advice. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah, yeah, that's been really interesting, actually, hasn't it, Terry? It yeah. certainly has, yeah. 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 So, but um, we've been absolutely delighted to be chat chatted with you. Um, really appreciate your time. Thank you. It's been great fun. Oh, good. Especially Excellent. for a Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's our late, well, getting on for late evening here. Well, let's keep in touch as we have been on Twitter. That would be great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to carry on and finish the trilogy off because uh, I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> thank you thank you well let me know i hope, hope that keeps up. another pair of also, eyes I, 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 i'm sure I, I watched your chat with with my mate sarah moorhead oh yeah, so, yeah. oh yeah, sarah yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I, I mean sarah and i met virtually for quite a long time because of uh, you know lockdown and her book was out roughly the same time as mine um but yeah she's lovely she stayed at my house um earlier in the year to go to a festival uh, but I, I, I'm sure I remember you mentioned Luca Vesti as well, didn't you? In that oh, year? Luca! Yes, yeah, Steve I know, knows. I know, I know Luca. Because and... one of the highlights of my short-lived crime writing career is that I played for the England crime writers against the Scottish crime writers um, in the annual football match that normally happens at Bloody Scotland um, up in Stirling at the festival. Uh, so I played last time, and Luca runs that team. Uh, and, you never and, told me that, you know. I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> well, and I played, and, and so the one and only time I played 
uh, we won three 0 so we're, we're the current holders of this um, trophy, and it's happening again this year because obviously there's been two years where it didn't happen. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's happening again in September, and I am at the festival. So I just want to get the message out there to Luca to make sure he picks me again. <laughs> yeah, he's he's been a bit quiet recently, Luca, on there uh, on social media, but uh, he suddenly came out again because he's just released another book. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So I'm sure he'll be at the festival. So so if you're watching, Luca, pick me again. Pick me I, again. I'll, I'll tag him into this when I put it out. <laughs> Good man. Well, well, yeah, that, yeah, we we asked him yeah. for a chat actually, uh, yeah. and he's just been here, there, and everywhere. I mean, he's out the country at the minute. I thought he was. Until a few days ago, I think, anyway, isn't he? Didn't yeah, stop me, know. Steve. I still did it. I'm out That's true, yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, good, <laughs> Trevor. It's been, it's, it's been great chatting with you. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. I look forward to, to watching it back. I'll be, I'll be out tomorrow. I'll let you know. Okay. I'll, I'll get, send you a message. I will, but for now, cheers. Bye-bye, guys. Yeah, thanks very Thank much, you. Trevor. It's been great. Cheers, Trevor. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.